Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to call forward uh, Molly and Carly, who are going to lead us in the hanging of the greens to kick off the Sabbath season. How shall we prepare this house for the coming day? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the eternal Christ? With garlands of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of our Savior? With wreaths of holly and ivy, telling of his passion, death, and resurrection. How shall we prepare our hearts for the coming Son of God? By hearing again the words of the prophet who foretold the saving work of God. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to God in the highest. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world, we light the Christmas tree. During Advent, whenever you see a light of tree, let it call to the one who turns light into our darkness. Now for the blessing of the Advent wreath, and you all have a part of this responsive reading. Uh, when it's your turn, you will say, Come, Lord Jesus. Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Come, Lord Jesus. May the keeping of the Advent open our hearts to God's love. Come, Lord Jesus. May the light of Christ penetrate the darkness of sin. Come, Jesus. May this wreath constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Advent season fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Come, Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'd like to call forward the Marsh family, who are going to uh, lead us in the lighting of the first candle of Advent. Today is the first day of Advent. We will be reflecting on faith. Our heroes from the Old Testament, who were devoted to God, did not necessarily know who the coming Messiah would be, or when he would come, but they lived by faith. They chose to believe the promises of God, and that he who promised was faithful. They walked by faith and not by sight. By faith, Noah built the ark before he was sealed up with grave. By faith, Moses led his people across the Red Sea away from slavery and toward freedom. By faith, David fought a giant, Daniel faced the lion, and Joseph became the rescue. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This morning, we light the candle of faith. light shines in the darkness and the darkness may never put it out lord thank you for your promises and thank you for our faith amen, amen. now if you wish please join me in the reciting of the lord's prayer <clears throat> our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. I'm really glad that you're all here. Uh, we have just a few announcements this morning. First of all, if you would like the Wait Upon the Lord devotional to help prepare your hearts for this Advent season, we still have more of those available at the Hub uh, up 
in the lobby, so make sure you grab one of those that will really uh, uh, aid you this holiday season. The Bible 101 class will be offered on December 5th at 1230, and a light lunch will also be provided. Please sign up on your connection card, the tearaway portion of your bulletin, uh, or you can see Joey Norson, and then place that connection card into the offering uh, basket in the back of the sanctuary at the conclusion of our service. And also we have life transformation groups. Um, they're actively trying to pair up the uh, people with the life transformation groups. And so if you would like to give this a try, please also indicate that on your connection card and uh, see Joey Norson for that as well, uh, or see Joe. Joe. And um, so anyway, with that, again, thank you for being here with us this morning. And um, let me open in a word of prayer. Lord God, I thank you for this church, and I thank you for this season of Advent, this time that we have to be able to prepare our hearts kind of a different way, a special way from the rest of the year, but help us to do that. Help us to draw closer to you these next few weeks. May all of this be a way, a tool that you use to draw our hearts closer. And uh, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this time of worship. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can stand up um, and sing a couple of songs. We can have our hearts for worship this morning. Oh,
Well, good morning once again. Uh, let's let's uh, pray again. Lord, I thank you once again for bringing us here together. And I know that as we are here together, you are in our midst. And I ask for um, your word to uh, pierce our hearts and to speak to us each individually this morning. Whatever it is you have for us, that we would receive it. And um, please be with us, not just here, but as we walk out these doors. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. There was this uh, nun who did home care visits and pastoral care and that sort of thing. Um, she did some health care. Uh, she was out in the country driving from one house to another, and she ran out of gas. Uh, but luckily for her, right up the road, there was a gas station. So, so she walked there, and she asked, hey, can I borrow a gas can, a little bit of gas? I'll go and I'll put it in the car, I'll drive back, fill it up, and get the can back. The guy said, well, I'm really sorry, but I actually lent it out to somebody else. So she trudged back to her car, and she found in her car a bedpan that she had. And so she, being resourceful, wrote, uh, walked back to the gas station, filled it with gas, and then walked back to her car. And she's pouring it into the tank, and as she's doing so, two men are walking by, and one said to the other, now man, that is fake. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about faith this morning. It's the, the candle that we just lit for this first Sunday of Advent. <clears throat> And to do so, I'm going to do something that I, I never typically do, because you're not supposed to as a speaker, and that is I'm going to read to you the entire chapter of Hebrews 11. And the reason for that is that I don't know anywhere else, I mean, there's a lot of places to read about faith, as I'll talk about later, but um, that's the best place. It's, they call it the uh, Biblical Hall of Fame, is Hebrews 11. I'm going to read it for you now. And don't make fun of me, it's the first time I've ever publicly done this, besides the first service. So please don't take any pictures. <laughs> but it was weird, like when I turned 40, someone broke into my house and um, stole all my books and then replaced them with the same exact books but with smaller print. It was very strange. <laughs> Hebrews 11, in the first few verses I'll have up here, and then I'll just move on. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the, an the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did, and by faith he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found, because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham would call to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and he went. And even though he did not know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, 
was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. And Abraham reasoned that, well, God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons. And he worshipped as he leaned on the staff, the top of the staff. By faith, Joseph, when he, when his end was near, he spoke about the exodus of Israelites from Egypt, and he gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the unborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. What more shall I say? I, I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment, and they were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. When I read that, by faith, by faith, by faith, it's almost like the reader really has something important he wants us to learn. It's by faith. And it makes me think of, well, if it's by faith, what is it not about? Because it's not about money. 
You know, gaining and gaining and earning and earning and climbing the social ladder and economic status and gaining all you can from this world, getting all the toys that you can buy. It's not about that. It's not about relationships, seeking out that perfect person, that perfect relationship or friendship. It's not about that. It's not about power to dominate others and control each other. It's not about status or symbolism, about faith, by faith, by faith. He wants to drill it into us. Rick Warren, as you may remember, who has faced a lot of trials and hardships over the last couple of years, he's a famous pastor from California. He said, living by faith isn't living with certainty. It's trusting God in spite of the unanswered questions and the unresolved doubts. Each Advent, I like to, for a little while, I like to use my imagination, sort of think about myself as being in Old Testament times, not to the New Testament world, you know, pre-Christ. What I would be looking forward to by faith, what would that be? And we have this incredible example from Hebrews 11 of all these heroes of old, men and women of faith that put their trust in something outside of themselves. And you know, when you go back to the Old Old Testament, you go back to Noah, what, what did he put his faith and trust in? It wasn't necessarily a Messiah who would come and save their people. It was that he was going to, uh, God said, build a boat, I'm going to save you and your family. That's what I'm going to do. And, and God was faithful to his promise. And then you go through with Abraham, and the promise to Abraham was, I'm going to make your descendants more abundant than the stars. That was important because that out of that lineage would one day become, would come the Messiah. But as you get closer to the time of David, King David, I think what they began to look forward to as a nation, as the people of Israel, was God is going to save us as a nation, as a people. And, and, and for, you know, they were kind of looking forward to a conquering hero, a conquering king that would come and save them from their oppression. If you remember from the nation of Israel throughout history, was persecuted and beaten down and oppressed. And they were conquered by nation after nation after nation. And then they'd be in occupied territory. And so they were, they were looking forward by faith at time when God was true to his words, especially like in the, the book of Isaiah. And some of the Psalms where it talks about this Messiah who's going to come, the Savior that will come and rescue them and pull them out. And I like to imagine myself sort of in that, like, you know, how much more meaningful this idea of looking forward, this advent, which, you know, means coming or arrival, we'd be looking forward to that. We have the benefit now of that it's in the past. We, Jesus came. That's who we worship. They were looking forward to the coming king. Author Pastor Bill Johnson once said, the walk of faith is to live according to the revelation we have received in the midst of the mysteries that we can't explain. I love that. The mysteries that we can't explain. That's faith. You might remember from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, it says that we walk by faith, not by sight. The NIV translates that word walk to live. We live by faith, not by sight. Oswald Chambers says, living a life of faith means never knowing where you are being led, but it does mean loving and knowing the one who is leading. It is literally a life of faith, not of understanding. And reason, but a life of knowing Him who calls us to go. I remember the story that I heard once about in Warsaw, Poland, the time the ghetto was built, put together for the Jewish people by the Nazi regime. regime. And of course, if you remember, they took the city and they surrounded it with walls, and if you were Jewish, that's where you went. It was those who weren't worthy, those who they didn't consider valuable, those who were different. And so they were put there and they segregated people. The haves and the have-nots, and so the Jewish people lived in the ghetto. And there was a story of this older woman who had 
granddaughter over for dinner one night. And she was in a different part of this walled city. And as time passed, they lost track of time. And as time passed, they realized, I gotta, oh, I gotta get you home to your family. And, and it was getting darker. And they started to get scared and nervous, the grandmother especially, because they knew that if they were caught outdoors after the curfew by the Nazis, then they, they would be beaten or tortured or maybe murdered for breaking the rules. And so they went on their way, and it, it was dark, it was pitch black, you couldn't see a few steps in front of you. That's how dark it had gotten them. They were nervous because they didn't know if they were even going the right way, and any delay would keep them from getting home on time and putting their lives in danger. But then something miraculous happened, a coming thunderstorm. So they would see these flashes of light from the lightning, and they would, they would be able to go in the right direction, and then it'd be pitch black again for a couple minutes, and then flashes of light, and they would move again further, closer to their destination. And it was a real walk by faith, and they made it. And our, our lives are like that sometimes. Sometimes it seems like we're walking in total darkness, but we walk by faith, and God gives us these lights to help lead us. I like how Martin Luther King Jr. once said it. He said, faith is taking the first step when you don't see the whole staircase. When we face these trials and struggles and challenges, and yet we have a Savior who leads us by faith. I like what Chuck Swindoll said. He said, walk by faith, stop the plague of worry, relax. Learn to say, Lord, this is your battle. I know that my faith increases and gets encouraged by two main things. One, by reading the Bible, by reading scripture. The, the Bible has all kinds of things to say about faith, of course. You know, I, I can remember... When I was at MCC, I met this older woman at one of my classes years and years ago, and, and she was all excited. She had gone to some computer class, and that's when computers were huge, and uh, we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have little computers that were carried around in our hands. And she was telling me that she did a word search. This is before Google, you know, or anything like that, for, with the word faith in the Bible. And she had it print out all of the scriptures with the word faith, and it was like this thick. And she gave it to me as a gift, and she had highlighted all of those times it said faith. I think I may still have it somewhere. You know, it's a big, huge printout with the all connected together with big holes along the sides. Remember that was it? That was was that even dot matrix? That, I don't even know what that was, but that's what it was. It must have taken hours to print out. You know, used a ton of ink. The Bible has a lot to say about faith. You know, for instance, it says that we should have. Uh, a faith like a child. Faith like a child. And for years, I thought that just meant like, you know, unquestioning devotion and commitment, you know, that kind of thing. But then I had children. And I realized that my kids ask questions all the time. <laughs> why? 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 But it's this, this childlike innocence and enthusiasm. It's that type of faith that he asks of us. And then the second way that my faith is increased, that I'm encouraged in my faith, is by watching other people of faith in real time. Like, for example, my wife. I can think back to several years ago now. We've been married, I think, 18 or so years. And I can think back to when we were dating, and she felt the call of God tug on her heart to step on a plane and leave everything she knew behind, her job, her comfort, her securities, her family, her friends, and fly to China. Because she felt this thing in her heart that told her, as she puts it, that she wanted her to do something for something greater than a paycheck. And she found herself 
flying to China by herself, not with a big tour group of like 30 people on a mission trip, just her, all by herself, finds herself going to China working in orphanages in rural China for a few months. I just remember being blown away by that type of faith. And it encouraged me in mine. And I think as recently as Al Hardy, our beloved member who passed a few weeks ago, just tremendous faith, even in the face of death, that his belief and his faith and trust and hope in Jesus Christ that never wavered. Did he question sometimes? Yes. <clears throat> But yet, even up until the last few days, he was sharing Jesus with his friends. That's how real his next world was to him. And it encouraged me in my faith. I want to share with you this, this little story. It's been recited many times. I've heard it read by Chuck Swindoll, and in this particular version, it's retold by someone named Tanya Gray. It says, as the drought continued for what seemed an eternity, a small community of Midwest farmers were in a quandary as to what to do. The rain was important not only in order to keep the crops healthy, but to sustain the townspeople's very way of living. As the problem became more urgent, the local church felt it was time to get involved, and they planned a prayer meeting in order to ask Rain. In what seemed a vague remembrance of an old Native American ritual, the people began to show. The pastor soon arrived and watched as his congregation continued to file in. He slowly circulated from group to group as he made his way to the front in order to officially begin the meeting. Everyone he encountered was visiting across the aisles, enjoying the chance to socialize with their close friends. As the pastor finally secured his place in the front of his flock, his thoughts were on the importance of quieting the crowd and starting the meeting. Just as he began asking for quiet, he noticed an 11-year-old girl sitting in the front row. She was angelically beaming with excitement, laying next to her was her bright red umbrella, poised for use. The beauty and innocence of this sight made the pastor smile to himself as he realized the faith this young girl possessed that the rest of the people in the room seemed to have forgotten. For the rest had come just to pray for rain. She had come to see God answer. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray for that kind of faith because I know from the Bible that you who have promised, you're faithful. So I pray, Lord, in this Advent season, as I ask you to draw me closer to you, I pray that one of the areas that you would work on me is my faith. Help it to be strong like that in Hebrews chapter 11. Like that one verse says that you would not be ashamed to be called my God. And I ask all these things in the name of Christ. Amen. If you could all stand up and sing the song of song. I love that story. Our God is faithful, and I uh, hope you brought our brothers to me.
Now, would you please join me in reading our closing scripture this morning from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. If you need prayer for any reason this morning, please go to the front of the sanctuary, concluding our service, and there will be members of our prayer team there to pray with you and for you. And if you could, uh, leave your connection cards, the tear out portion of your bulletin, and our offering baskets back here uh, in the back of the sanctuary, that would be wonderful on your way out. And now let us receive the benediction. Lord, as we leave here this morning, may our faith be increased. May you give us that kind of faith, God. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to be as children in our faith. And I ask that you bless us and keep us all the days of our lives. And make your face to shine down upon us. In the name of Christ, amen.